tomorrow we celebrate Jesus's rising from the dead, conquering sin and death for our behalf. And if you don't know what that means, then I'd like to explain it to you in this video. What's good y'all, it's Daniel back with a another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about something a little more serious than normal. With it being Easter weekend or Resurrection Sunday coming tomorrow, I thought it would be prudent to talk about my faith. I've been pretty open about my faith, especially if you look at the, the songs I've made on my YouTube channel. Um, literally titling one SDG for Soli Deo Gloria, which means all glory to God. Uh, I want to be a humble servant of his and a follower of him because I believe he is Lord of everything. He's king over all things, and that should include my life as well. Now, we all get to choose whether we honor him as king, but he is king and is rightfully so. With that in mind, I want to let y'all know about this video that I saw recently. It's by the Christian hip hop artist KB, and I think it's a great explanation of the gospel. Uh, if you want to check that out, I'll also give my quick summary of it, I guess. Um, but the gospel is translates to good news. It, it's good news for all of us. And uh, essentially, it's the story of, of God and, and then the world he made, and thus you and me. And that story is that God is good and he created everything you, you see it in in different aspects you see it in the in the beauty of, of the sky and and the animals and the intellect that went into that and, and you see it in certain patterns like the fibonacci sequence that you see over and over again like an artist leaving his imprint on his painting or on his sculpture or whatever it is like God is, is a creative artist. And, th and that's why we all have creativity. That's why we were designed to build. We, we are made in God's image. So in many ways, we are like God. We have intellect. We desire to love others. We are creative and we can build and construct things. And in so many ways, God has designed us to be like him. And yet there is, there is a difference, right? Because we, we aren't God. God made us, we are not self-made. Uh, I know that's a popular thing the world promotes is like a self-made business person or something like that. No, but we can't do anything without God. God made us, if he didn't do that, we wouldn't exist. But why did God make us? Like why, why did he even do that? Because he, he is God and he deserves glory and he wanted us to glorify him. That is our purpose, that's why we exist, is to glorify God. The reason you exist, the reason I exist, the reason any of us exist is to play our part in exalting the king of the universe as the king that he is. But we keep thinking that we are God or that we know best. And so even though God gave us this beautiful world and he gave us boundaries because he knew what would be best for us, we thought we knew what's best for ourselves. Even though he made those boundaries, knowing that that's what's best for us we thought we knew what was best and so we made our own rules disobeyed what he's called us to do and that's how sin was brought into the world sin's kind of thrown around in christian circles and sometimes not explain what it means but it's essentially brokenness it's anything that goes against what god calls us to god wants this world to flourish right and anything that goes against that causes the world to to break and and when we we sin we we bring that brokenness and we see brokenness all around the world brokenness is everywhere we see it we see it in our relationships with one another and how there, there can be uh, disagreements that result in violence because we take it to that part um, we see it in adultery we see it in divorce we see it when we lie to one another we see it in in stealing we see it in in terrorism and we see it in so many different ways like like i just threw out just things that came to the top of my head of ways that this world is broken and i see it and i believe we all see that the world is is not perfect and that's because of what we've done to it that is our fault we brought this upon ourselves for our sin we deserve to die as a perfect god he can do that he's the one that made the universe He's the one that establishes the boundaries. He's allowed to make that call. And in bringing this brokenness into the world, we've also damaged our relationship with God. God cannot be with sin because he is perfect. He is holy, which means he is separate from. That's one of the reasons we're, we aren't God, because we have sinned and we are made from him. So he's separate from us. And he's also separate from sin. And because we are with sin, he couldn't be with us. But 
that is not the end of the story. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die for our sins. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So with it being Easter Sunday tomorrow or Resurrection Sunday, we're reminded of how God redeemed the world. We can't repair that brokenness ourselves. Try it. We all have tried it. There's things we try and do, and on our own power, we cannot do it. We need God to redeem and restore creation. We need God to come in, help us change our hearts, change our ways, change our desires for what he wants for us. We can't do it on our own. We are broken. We can do our best, and that's still not going to be perfect because we aren't perfect. We're broken, like we've said. We need a perfect God, a perfect substitute on our behalf. So God came and sent his son, Jesus, to be our perfect substitute. God did not want to leave us broken. God didn't just want to see his world collapse and the people that he so dearly loved suffer as a result of their own sinfulness time and time again without any sort of restoration to it. God is a redeemer. He re restores creation. He repairs the cracks of our brokenness. So, he sent his only son, Jesus, to live a perfect life that we could not live. Like, let's be honest. That brokenness, it's not just caused by others around us. That's caused by you and by me. I am a sinful human being that have committed so many treasons against the king of the universe. Even one of those deserves death. And I've committed, I literally could not count how many times that I have disobeyed what I know God has told me to do. Which is even worse than disobeying it when you don't know. And yet, God still loves me and will fight for that restored relationship with me. He forgives me of my sin. And I accept that forgiveness. So when Jesus came, he paid that price that I couldn't pay. Because I can't live a perfect life. I, I deserve to die. He died for me I personally haven't had any of like my friends or family members who are like literally died for me like the action movie like jumping in front of a bullet kind of thing but this idea that that's what God did for me I think it I think it's John 15 that says that love is, has no greater than this, that one lay down his life for his friend. Even in the greatest form of love, Jesus sacrificed himself for us when he didn't deserve that death. That was, that was me. That was you. We deserve to be put on that cross, dying a painful death, agonizingly tortured, for our sin. That should have been me. That should have been us. And yet, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever should believe in him, in his sacrifice for us, in his kingship, that he's king of the universe, and that as king, we are to serve him and follow him. If you believe in that, then you are saved, you are restored, and have that intimate, personal relationship with God that he desires. Like, let's be honest, he desires that more than we do. We are blessed that we have a God who loves us so much that he pursues us no matter what. And if we believe in him, recognizing him as God of both the universe and our lives, then we can experience that flourishing life here on earth and spend eternity with him in his presence. When, when we die in this physical body, then we will be with him forever in a new body, in a new heaven, a new earth. From the beginning, God's had this plan of redeeming the broken universe, the universe that we broke, through his son Jesus. And when Jesus died, he did not stay dead. Because if he did, then I don't mean to be rude, but it'd be like, just like any other like insurrectionist or martyr that just died for us. We respect that. And it's not something 
one of a kind, like never seen before in all of human history. But Jesus is certainly the only son of God, the only way to be reconciled with God. He came as fully God, fully man, died for our sins. What more can we want? And then he rose again from the dead. Yes, sir. Because like in doing so, he conquers sin and death and brokenness. Because now when we die in our physical bodies, we can have that perfect restored relationship with God in his presence in heaven. Otherwise, we'd be separated from him. We'd be outside that city. We'd be outside of heaven. And unfortunately, that's that's the way it's going to be for, for people who don't believe. And that's that's not on God as like some cruel, harsh God. God is a just God. And he will give us what we are pushing for, what we desire. He wants us to desire what he wants for us. But time and time again, if we continually resist, he'll eventually give us over to our passions. Let us see why our decisions have those consequences. It's sort of like um, at a certain point, parents, I think, should discipline their children in some way and say, no, don't do that and explain the consequences for it. But at some point, you've just got to let your kid make their own decisions. And when they make bad decisions, suffer the consequences and realize that that is not a wise choice to make. And now in the future, they won't. That's, that's God as our father wants what's best for us, knows what's best for us, tells us what to do. And yet we continually want other things and want to do other things. And eventually, after time and time again of being patient with us and pursuing us constantly, which he always does, he still pursues us but says, you can make your decisions. I will be right there to pick you up when you fall. But if this is what you want, you can have it. And then we're surprised when that thing or whatever choice it is doesn't satisfy us. God has been here the whole time. The only thing that will perfectly satisfy the deep desires of our hearts. And we're just here like, nah, I, there's this other thing. I know you say that you're the best for me and that all I need is you. But I think, um, I think popularity is going to fill that void. I think sex is going to fill that void. I think alcohol or drugs are gonna fill that void. I think if I have all the money I want or all the friends I want, that, that that's gonna make me happy. It doesn't, it doesn't. You can try running those things. It's not gonna work. It's just not, you can have all of it. Think of someone who you will think has like everything, like some maybe like top 1% rich person that you think has all the lifestyle that the world promises is like the best. They're not happy. If they don't have God, they're not happy. They're, they're not going to be deeply satisfied. They're, they're, it's going to be like for a moment, they'll feel good. And that feeling goes away. And then they're left trying to fill that void time and time and time again. Guys, God wants to fill that void and he can do it for you right now. So please turn to him. Like when he rose again from the dead, he conquered sin and death for you, for me. He paved a way for us, if we believe in him and his kingship, to be our savior and to fully satisfy us. We talked about the beginning that our purpose is to glorify God. When we don't do that, we aren't living into our purpose. There was a, there was a speaker I heard recently who said, God redeems everything that allows it. God gave us a will, right? He lets us make our own decisions. He wants us to choose the things of him, just to choose what he has called us to and what he knows to be good for us. He, in doing so, we live a flourishing, bountiful life and walk step in step with him and with the Holy Spirit that guides us. But he's gonna let us make our decisions. He's not gonna make us like a machine that's forced to do everything. He wants us to want him. And when we want him, we want to live for him. So he wants to redeem me. He wants to redeem you. But that can only happen if we let him. He's not going to force our heart to change. He wants your heart to willingly and lovingly 
follow him. Guys, God wants you to run to him. He wants you to find your full satisfaction in him because that's the only way you're going to find it. He will let you make your own decisions, but he wants you to pursue him and he will continually urge you and ask you to choose him. And I pray that we all do that. And accepting Christ as, as your Lord, as King, and as our Savior doesn't just mean, okay, it's like a, it's not like some words you say in a prayer or some mental assent to, okay, God's, God's King. The Bible says that even the demons acknowledge that Jesus is, is God. That doesn't mean that they're saved. That doesn't mean that they have that intimate personal relationship. It's more than just a, a mental acknowledgement. It is a, a life change. It is like a heart posture. And what I mean by that is like the entire way we live changes when we realize that God is actually king. Like that God actually is who he says he is and that he truly knows and wants what's best for us. He's not just like a dad that wants what's best for us, but sometimes messes up and is wrong himself, like our human fathers or mothers. And he's not just like some all-knowing wizard that, that knows what's best for us, but doesn't actually care about us and so doesn't tell us what's really best for us. He both knows and wants what's best for us. God wants us to follow him. The Bible uses a Greek word in the, in discipleship, which is um, when one person follows the another person and like wants to learn from them. It has this idea of following so closely that like the dust from their sandals comes on to you. Y'all, if we believe in God as the king of our lives, then that will change everything. That changes how we see others that changes how we see ourselves that changes how we see the actions that we are to take the thoughts that we are to have the thoughts that we are to, to cast out the desires of our heart that we're supposed to follow and those that we are supposed to get rid of because they are still of the world of the flesh it all changes everything and it's for the best i don't get too much into my personal testimony but i can tell you right now before i accepted christ i had I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I just didn't, I didn't know why I was here. Okay, I, someone tells me something's right, why is that right? Okay, even, and I heard the phrase like, okay, God says so, well, okay. It, without the context of a God that loves me and knows me, a God that, that knows what's best and wants what's best for me, then it just sounded to me like some other authority telling me what to do. But no, this authority, the king of the universe, God, He's not just a sovereign God, but he wants that personal relationship with you and with me. And if we accept him as our Lord and Savior and believe that he came, lived a perfect life, died for our sins, we deserve that cross, but he took it instead and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, is with God the Father right now, and will return one day to fully restore and redeem creation where there be no more brokenness, no more sin. In that holy city, we will be in perfect harmony with God in his presence, experiencing joy so fully that we can't even comprehend it right now. If we believe that, then that will change everything about the way we think, and about the way we talk, and about the way in which we live our lives in every single action, aspect, every square inch of the realm in which we've been called to will be transformed if we recognize God as our King and our Savior. Again, um, there's a video from KB that I think does a really great job of explaining it. So if I was not clear enough, then I would encourage you to check that out. Um, I think it's a great introduction to the story of the world uh, and the story of God, because that really is what it is. Everything centered around God. Also, I might not get footage of this in time for the video, um, but if I think it's appropriate, our church is doing a cross service for Good Friday. Our senior pastor is literally building a cross and we're gonna lift it up. And I think that is a very powerful picture because it helps make real the fact that Jesus literally hung from that cross with nails in his hands and feet, dying a painful, agonizing and literally the word is from crucifixion the excruciating death 
that we, we deserve that death, but he took that for us. So because that's such a powerful picture, if I get that footage, I'll include it in this video right here. Um, and hopefully it helps y'all as much as it helped me. Look how far our Savior descended for you. Look how far he was willing to go and the price he was willing to pay. Look at God and the orchestration of sacrifice and substitute through the Bible. You can't miss it. As you see this cross raised, would you think deeply about the wrath of God that he bore for you and for me? If you have any other questions or if there's anything else I can address more specifically, please ask me. Um, I hope I have been clear in my faith, clear in what I know to be true. And um, man, I appreciate y'all watching. I just want to encourage you this Easter weekend that um, we're not on our own. We have sinned, but but God has not just abandoned us and left us. He wouldn't do that. He's a, he is a loving father and he continually pursues us in the midst of our sin, in the midst of our rebellion. He still loves us enough that he literally died for us and he conquered sin and death on our behalf. So remember that this weekend and all the time. Let, let's not just celebrate him resurrection sunday or good friday let's celebrate him every day and recognize him as our god and king i love you all hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one bye guys